Yeah, he's not the best military leader. I don't think you can improve his stats by fighting in a war with him. You might be able to. So don't quote me on that. A pious ruler. Yes, send it to the church. Actually, hang on. What, what event is this? My Imperator, an unusual number of nobles and merchants from all over the Islamic world have made their pilgrimage to Mecca this year. The increased traffic of these wealthy persons has bolstered local trade. How should we collect the taxes? Ah, okay. So, send it to my coffers, get some money for ourselves. Send it to the merchants, make sure that they get lots of merchant power. Or send it to the church and get pious ruler. Pious ruler, most definitely. Because if we look at our listing now for religion, everything has gone down. This was about a hundred and something before, I believe. I think it was 112. It was more. <laughs> That's all we really need to know. Do I want to pull you off privateering duty? I don't think so. This is useful, because we're currently at war with, uh, with Gotland, which means that we get a bonus. So for a while, we are able to have two military leaders and not suffer a loss of military power. I'm not sure though, I don't, I don't know what I want to do exactly. I know that I'm going to besiege this place. And I think I will split the Baltic fleet in half and send half of it to the Gulf of Riga. We should be okay. Gilan has fallen to our missionaries. Beautiful. We should be alright. We should have the advantage in heavy ships and other such things, and the Danish are con constantly patrolling this area, so if the Gotlanders sally out with their fleet, we should be safe. I'm not sure what we'll do if we force Polotsk out of the war ourselves, if we get to make a peace with them. Because I don't really have a particular plan for them, I don't really need to do anything in that area. You are going to go attack Riga, and before you leave, you get to be... I promised somebody I would name a legion this, so... This is for you. I can't remember what your actual name is, Mr. Buzz Bunny. You have a rabbit in this picture. <laughs> uh, we will call this one... Lijo, because I was asking for names, and true, true enough, he did give a name. It's Lijo Hodor. There we go. It is now existing. It is a thing. And Sweden has accepted peace with Gotland. What did they do? Sweden! No! No, Sweden! Okay, that, that settles it. That settles it. Aha! So this is one of these things that you can occasionally get for setting up a... Uh, uh, taking, up, taking a choice in a event that you probably shouldn't have taken. So one minute our army is the envy of the world, next no one has anything good to say about it. We have no idea how our grand army slips so, but it could up, end up affecting recruitment. So we can recruit a little harder, it costs extra stuff, or we can shake up the military establishment and lose stability. Well, we're role-playing this a little bit, and it doesn't make sense to do a shake-up right in the middle of a war. Not, not now. If we're going to shake it up, we'll shake it up later. We'll take the increased cost. We are clever statesmen. Okay, so we have an extra diplomat free. I think, seeing as we're already in a war, we're already in a war that relies on, uh, that, that relies? No. We're already in a war that involves Gotland. So I'm thinking if we increase our relations with Norway, we can try and force a peace. I believe you can do that. In alliance actions? No. Influence actions. There we go. Enforce peace. We're at war, you need to be able to declare war on the target. Ah. Okay, no, we can't. But we'll, we'll increase relations with Norway anyway, because it might help. It can't hurt. And I believe that Riga is actually the Gotlander capital, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. You don't need my army there anymore, so we're going to go to Livland instead. And hopefully, we'll be able to force Denmark... Uh, not Denmark... Gotland. I keep getting them all mixed up because they're all in the same area. I know. Kill me now. Mixing up the Scandinavian countries. But they're all in the same general vicinity. Good lord, that's a 45,000 strong. Wow. Country before faith. Yes, we will trust them to remain loyal. Can we pause? Thank you. Good god. Alright, Polotsk took a piece. 
What did they do? Wait, what? <laughs> Palotsk will be forced to give Denmark 10% of their income each month to pay for war operations. Okay, that makes sense. Palotsk will annul all treaties with Gotland, and it will release Lithuania as a sovereign state. Why? I, I don't know. I don't even know. But there you go, Lithuania is a thing. Palotsk no longer considers Denmark a rival, and Lithuania is now their rival. Alright, well, on to Dorpat then. So, that's a thing. Siege of Semigala is over, good. Let's go grab Osel, because it's right there. It's probably Osel. I'm probably pronouncing a lot of these things wrong. We received a claim on Kovno. Oh, it's Gotland. It's okay. I don't mind pissing Gotland off. And we will maintain a diplomat to uh, to keep relations with Norway up. That's annoying. I, I was really hoping that we might get lucky for the early game and be able to get our, uh, our guy as a pope. Oh yeah, I had to change some of the parameters for forming the Scandinavian nation, so we get it in here. I don't know if that's come up before. Let's get rid of that. We'll choose a new mission later. That one's pretty much going to be a problem. If it comes up with a Achieve Religious Unity, I'll take it. Because that's our goal anyway. Come on, Denmark. Kick their ass. Kick their ass, sea bass. Oh, God. How far are you into losing the war? Are they going to declare a full conquest? Because I don't know if they can. They might not be able to... Ooh, 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 ooh. What have you done? What did you do? <sighs> Shit. We just lost we just lost half our Baltic fleet. Go home during wartime. Go to Danzig. We are not gonna be able to stop them from sailing. But that's okay. We don't really need to. It just makes our sieges longer. Which is unfortunate, but we can roll with it. We can work it. So we're going to create a new Roman navy. I say new, it's the same exact thing, but we need another one. And I think we'll build one over in this area too. We'll probably sail it up over here, but I just want to have a really, really powerful fleet. We've won the Siege of Livland, good. Let's go to Raval. And I'm thinking we might try to take Notteburg as well. Norway's accepted peace, what did they take? Yeah, they took a lot. They took pretty much everything. Wow, Gotland. So Gotland might form Scandinavia, that would be interesting. Um, I changed some of the parameters because there is one province, I believe it's Midgetland? Midgetland? I call it Midgetland, it's probably not even close to how you're actually supposed to say it. But Midgetland is one of those provinces that you require to form Scandinavia, and if you don't have it, you obviously have to go to war for it, and I would rather that they did not have to... Why are you not sieging? You count as being... What? I don't even know. Go go to... Go to Nordenburg. Um... That's right, if you... If you have to fight for it, you have to be able to beat the enemy that you're fighting, and there's pretty much not going to be anyone who can take us all by themselves. So I changed the parameters so we wouldn't have to... Um, just, so we wouldn't have to take a fall, pretty much, and go, Yes, you won, here you go, have that. Now they just don't need to worry about it. I think what we need to do, though, is we need to help our Scandinavian allies, and to that end, I'm going to place an army in Sigiland. In fact, I'm going to place two. I'm going to put Germanicus in there too. Actually, I want to reinforce Germanicus a bit. I'm going to build a extra Roman legion. And then I'm going to split it between those two armies. Now, we can get administrative tech and diplomatic tech. I'm going to take both of them. Because we're not too far ahead. 190, that, that's that's good because that's right on now on our self-imposed rule of not being more than 200% ahead. And we can pass the Act of Uniformity, which gives extra missionary strength, yes please. Or, and the Suffragan Bishop Act. I don't need it. But I'll take it because it reduces national tax modifier and we're gonna have stupid amounts of money at the end anyway, so there we go. 
Let's see now. Are you actually sieging properly? For some reason, it decided that the army wasn't within... Uh, wasn't able to siege because it was currently trespassing on borders or some bollocks like that. It goes, oh, you have troops in foreign nations. Well, yes, I'm attacking them. And we can select a mission. Okay, good. So we can take Kovno. We can claim our rival's province. I'm going to take the Achieve Religious Unity. It doesn't give you anything particularly good at the end, but it seems like a goal that we'd go for considering that in Crusader Kings 2 we were very much about defending the faith and that sort of thing, so it sounds like a good plan to me. Let's roll with it. Alright, so the Gotlander fleet is out there in force. I didn't think that they'd bother to actually form a fleet like that, but they did. Raval has been sieged down. Good. It means we can throw you into Kexholm. Actually, I don't know if I want to. I think I might actually throw this army into... Osterbotten? Yes. Yes, I'm gonna throw it in there. Osterbotten? I think that's how you say it. I, I don't even know. Where are you guys going? Actually, no. They can defend Finland. Because we have other armies down here that we'll be able to free up soon enough anyway. This place is doing alright. In terms of the siege, so we should be able to get these fellows back soon enough. I want to stop the Gotlanders from being able to come over and retrieve these lands. Because right now we hold their capital. The longer you hold their capital, the more war exhaustion they will get, I believe. See, there we go. They're currently at uh, low war enthusiasm, because the length of the war has gone for a while, and we've made a lot of gains. Plus, the relative strength of our alliances means that they are not doing well at all. Not, well, they're doing okay. I mean, they, <laughs> they took out Sweden and Norway, so they're doing alright. But their war exhaustion is very, very high, so national unrest is pretty crippling. Now, Norway... I can offer you vassalization. I'm not sure I want to do that. I mean, on the one hand, I do. But I will go ahead and I will proclaim a guarantee for them. That basically means that if anyone declares war on them, we get pulled in as their defender because we said, hey, Norway's our friend, leave them alone. This, this fleet worries me. The positive thing, though, is that because we managed to get troops into Sagelland before that fleet got there, we protect the strait. So, unless they have a lot of transports there, and I don't think they do, they've got 24 transports. But even if they sneak in behind us, we have large armies. Can I get you to Sagelland? Or is that... that navy's probably going to stop me. I'll put these guys in Holstein for now. I'll split them after the... The war is over. You guys go to Kexholm. Make sure that nothing goes disa <laughs> Make sure nothing goes disastrously wrong while we can't fix it. Pretty much. And let's go help out at Osterbotten. Wait, what? Did they just order an assault? They just ordered an assault. You idiots. My army! My beautiful, beautiful army, what have you done? You down fools. Well, I guess it worked. Urgh. Why? Why game? Why? Alright, you guys go take over the Siege of Kekholm. You... You move up here, that's the bottom. Gotland is going to lose this war. I was just hoping we could do it in a slightly more painless fashion than the way the AI has decided that we should. Alright, I need to move this army to help out down here. I want to try and take Stockholm just to get... Whoa. Hey now. Hey now. That's what happens when you don't pay attention. I think we're going to win simply by virtue of being, yeah, having friends right there. But it was very, very close. It was a close run thing. Alright, we're going to abandon Finland. Because we need to get down here. If we can take Stockholm, it achieves the same goal anyway. Stops them from getting across and attacking Danish holdings here. So we're going to go straight for Stockholm. And let's see now. I would really, really like it if we could move across the strait here and attack Skane. 
I don't think we're going to be able to. What idea group does it want us to go for? I will take... I will take superior firepower. Because we're currently in a war. It makes role-playing sense that we would want to increase the ability of our generals. That we'd want to support them, so we'll go with that. Alright. So this is where the real fun of the game is for me. The wars. And this is great. I love these events, these things. These are beautiful. A siege dragging on over winter is always costly and best avoided completely. Spring campaign season. This winter has been particularly harsh and one of our sieges has seen both equipment and soldiers freezing. At this rate, we'll either have to recuperate and wait out the winter or send in more men, many of whom are likely to die from the cold and starvation. How many are we willing to sacrifice to take this one city? As many as we can. Well, <laughs> as many as we can. As many as we need, I should have said. Okay, we can't go across the strait to Aland, but this army, what is it? They haven't got any artillery, they've got mostly infantry. What have we got in the way of troops? We have got not a whole heap of good stuff, really, if we're honest. That's a shame. How's this fleet doing? Okay, we've, we've got another fleet coming. We should have two of them, actually. Yes, 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 yes. All right, we're going to retake the Baltic Sea. You guys are going to join up, and then you're going to you're going to sail into the Baltic Sea, and then the Baltic fleet is going to attack the Seventh Fleet here. Okay, we got a plan. We got a plan. We were working this. We're doing well. We, we weren't going to lose, but there were a few moments there where I was going, "Oh, what have I done?" Okay, they're splitting up a little bit. I'm going to leave this army and we're going to go help our allies because I imagine that's where they're going. Jampland? Oh no, they're not actually. Alright, we'll wait here, we'll see where they're going first and if we can help. Another winter siege. Kexholm needs to come down. How far away are they from actually winning? Okay, not too far. We could conceivably assault and win, but I don't want to, simply because it would be very, very risky. Now, where are you guys going? Are you actually attacking? You're going to Lapland. And you're going to... What? What are you doing? You're just marching back and forth. Why would you do that? That is silly. Stop it. Oh, good. Our fleets have arrived. All right. Now we needed some epic theme music to go with it. Okay, go to Kattegat. And you go... No, you have to wait, actually, don't you? Yes. You have to wait and swoop in. Although you might be able to get to Pomeranian. Yeah, go for it. If they try and attack out of here, that's good, because we move them into, uh, we move them into a position that suits us, not guarding the strait. If they wait... We've got it better. Okay, they're going to Lapland again. I have no idea what, what they're doing, or what they think is going to work there. Alright, so we made it there. That's good. That means one less sea zone to go across. Timurids are doing some stuff, stuff and things. Alright, they're, they're going for the Southern Baltic Sea. Good. Alright, come out. Go for it as well. Oh, snap. They turned around. Damn it. Alright, well, Baltic Fleet, get in there. Alright, yeah, let's see you win this one, bitches. Merchant defects. This is that same thing we had before. I'm gonna go with merchants of right. Okay, now, do a quick check, make sure they're not doing anything stupid up here. Osterbottom. Where are you guys going? You're going to Osterbottom. That's annoying, that's unfortunate. That is definitely unfortunate. I was hoping that they would stay there. How many ships did we lose in that? We lost five ships ourselves, I think. Yeah, we lost five ships, but that's all right. We can work with that. And now our armies are free to advance across the strait. So go for Skane. I'm gonna keep this fleet here because it's a nice bottleneck zone. It stops them from preventing our retreat over to Sajeland if we need to go. And they can't follow us there, so it prevents us from being trapped. 
where Gotland can kill us and we can't do jack to the squad. Now, where are you guys off to? Bergslagen. You might be trying to relieve Stockholm, which would be unfortunate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send these armies, send these two legions straight towards Stockholm. We need to take Stockholm first. This single army can hold the line. Yeah, they're going for Stockholm. But our siege in Halsingland... Halsingland? Halsingland. I, I don't know. You people are going to crucify me for this anyway, because I'm terrible at pronouncing these names. But luckily the siege there is over, so we can turn around and attack... Scotland. And Kex home finally fell. Thank you. I am glad. Thank you for your compliance. Now, can we make it to Aland before this fleet decides... But I say fleet, it's one ship. Before it decides to turn around and attack. I hope so. Now, we don't want to move too quickly, because if we move straight away, these guys will probably stop attacking, and I don't want them to stop attacking. I want to trap them and kill the bastards. So I'm going to change the destination of these... Legions down here to Nark. Narke? Again, I don't know. I'm just going to call it what I see it. And when the time is right, so I'm going to go on the 21st. There we go. They should be locked into that. Alright, come on. Come on, come on. You have to get there. 12th of April. Alright, but we made it. We made it. And that's the important thing. Actually, you can go here. And the other army can just stay here. That should work. Now we're not going to be able to chase these guys down because we haven't finished offensive ideas. Once you finish offensive ideas, you get the ability to force march. And if you force march, you can usually catch an army that's trying to run away. Usually. Sometimes there's a little bit of trouble with that. But usually you can do it. Which is very, very important because otherwise it will stop. It will, re it will retreat to a certain point and then it will start to reinforce. And you don't want that to happen. That is bad news. Very, very bad news. How are you doing? Okay, we made it. Good, good. Now I think... Where did their fleet go? They had some ships left over. It's... At least I think they did. It's possible we destroyed their entire fleet and I didn't notice. This would not be the first time that happens. I have done that many a time in many a game. I think we'll keep the fleet here for a minute. Because the walls here have been breached, so this place, Skane should fall fairly quickly, and we'll leave this army there to hold it. And then we'll go straight for Stockholm and blockade it. So, come on. Besiege them. Besiege them. The walls are broken, it shouldn't be that difficult to take the damn place. There we go. Now, I, something that I'm curious about. Can we take a separate piece? We can. Okay. Alright, there we go. That's a better decision for you guys. I'm going to end the session here. And the decision is going to be, do we stay in the war, hoping that Denmark will have the sense to reform Sweden and perhaps give Norway back its territory as well? Or do we go for a separate piece? Because the Empire does not need to look at the Scandinavian nations and go, You silly kids, what you doing? So that, that is your vote. Separate peace or stick in the war? The choice is yours, my Senate. And next time, with me, Grey Hunter, we will, uh, well, we'll see what you guys decide, won't we, I guess. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.